video about how to fix your refrigerator when things are not cold enough. And the symptoms, the symptoms are we've got it turned all the way up to seven and things are still just barely cold in the refrigerator section. And then downstairs in the freezer, you can see ice built up against the wall of the freezer. And even though all this ice is built up here, it's still, and it's turned up to maximum, it's still not cold enough to keep everything frozen. The ice takes a long time to turn into ice and eventually, if you leave it alone, eventually your frozen food will no longer be frozen. So there's a thing called the thermostat that lives behind this wall and we're going to replace that. I paid about $20 for it. The, the price varies anywhere from between $20 and $40 for these items. You just have to find a refrigerator supply store that will sell you in peace. All right, step one, go behind your refrigerator and pull the plug. So now we open her up. This is in the back of the freezer. This is a Kenmore uh, bottom freezer model from Sears. Now Sears has all of the, uh, the electrical, not electrical, all of the schematic diagrams on their website. So if you go to the Sears website, they've got a full diagram of every appliance that they sell and they've also got uh, links to the parts where you can buy the parts. I found the part cheaper somewhere other than Sears, but if you don't have a local place that you have a relationship with, then you can go to, go to the Sears website and order it. Also, I didn't want to wait two weeks while my food rotted for the part to get here. So we pull out the shelves. All right, shelves are out. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out all the ice to try and scoop and scrape as much of this ice off as I can before I take the wall off, take the back wall out. I think I need to do this also to find the screws that are holding it on. It's finally defrosted. We're gonna remove five bolts. One, two, three, four, five. It might be different on your refrigerator. And then I will show you what we're looking for once I've removed this back panel. All right, let's see what evil lurks behind this panel. Ah, so everything is frozen back here. And I think, I think, in here, connected to this connector, is the thing we're looking for, so, which is the thermostat. So I'm going to defrost this, and then I will show you what a thermostat looks like. Yikes. All right, snowball fight. <laughs> uh, in position. Snowball fight. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> snowballs, snowballs snowballs in summer that's the one plus of this whole operation Ooh, one second I need another snowball keep going okay see if we can find a snowball in there nah, nah. alright ice has been removed mostly uh, it took a couple of hours we chipped away at some of it with a spoon and just let the rest of it melt hitting it with a hair dryer a little bit towards the end uh, you don't want to go hacking away with a knife at these delicate things. So it's better to just um, get the obvious ice off, the, the easy stuff, and then let the rest of it melt so that nothing ends up being damaged. Now your thermostat is right there, clamped onto a tube. Really easy to get off. This is the new one that I've bought here, so I should just unplug the old one, plug the new one in, and we're good. So I grab this, it's just a clip that holds it on, and then unplug it here. connector doesn't look right on the new one so I'll have to, I'll have to modify it. Alright so I've taken the connector off of the old one and uh, spliced it onto the new one. I'm going to use a waterproof, this one's full of this uh, sort of waterproof silicone connector piece. And that way 
if this happens again, the ice water won't get in here and short circuit it. I think I'll probably stick a little shugu in there too to, to make it even more waterproof just in case. So you just pull this little connector open, to get the groove in the right position, and then clamp it right on here, like this. Let's see, I want the wires to come out this way. Trying to just keep everything up, up and away from the evaporator. All right, it looks nice and clean. Uh, some refrigerators have a tray on the bottom where all the water would go when this stuff melts. So you want to check under your refrigerator and see if it a tub of dirty water underneath it. I left this refrigerator uh, that I left I left the freezer open all night with the 60 watt light bulb right in front of this and that was enough to melt it all off and so now I'm going to put the back cover back on and turn it on and then it should work fine now it's entirely possible that there was nothing wrong with the thermostat that the only thing wrong with it was that it was covered in ice so it wasn't able to do its job last time I did this the thermostat was was broken so it needed to be replaced so i'm replacing it this time also because i just don't want to have to do this more than once and have all my food go bad putting the back on the freezer is relatively simple on this particular model you have to put the bottom in first in this little channel and then rock it forward the only trick is with the ice maker So you put the vent on first and then make sure that you get the bottom of the back panel in the little groove down here and then you rock it forward. Now the ice maker has a little rubber tube in it so you just stick your finger in the hole and make sure that the rubber tube comes out of this hole. Make sure that you remember to put the electrical connector to the ice maker coming back out of the wall and then just screw it in using the screws. And the screwdriver that I'm using is just a uh, it's a standard generic uh, screwdriver with removable reusable bits and the head of this screw is the same size as the head of one of those uh, screwdriver bits so just a, a an empty screwdriver will drive the screws in just fine if they're the same size as the ones I'm using alright plug it back in check for cold air Feels good. And put your frozen stuff back in it and you're ready to rock.